is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today i am quite excited we are in the completely redesigned 2021 ford f-150 courtesy of bob ruth ford in dillsburg pa for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so you guys may or may not have seen my first look video of the new f-150 already absolutely was a huge fan of this truck from the start so i have been quite giddy to actually get my hands on it and now is the time so in this video i will be going over everything about this one from pricing engine braking acceleration tech and of course everything else as well and so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2021 f-150 first one being the xl starting at twenty eight thousand nine hundred and forty dollars xlt for thirty five thousand fifty dollars lariat which is the one we have today starting at $44,695, King Ranch for $56,330, Platinum for $59,110, and lastly, the Limited starting at $70,825. So as you can imagine, with all of those trim levels, there are actually six different engine configurations available for the 2021 F-150. So I'm going to ramble them off real quick for you, but essentially each trim level is going to have their own engine configuration options. First one is a 3.3 liter direct injected V6. 290 horsepower, 265 pound-feet of torque. Then there's a 2.7 liter turbocharged V6, 325 horsepower, 400 pound-feet of torque. 3.5 liter turbocharged V6, 400 horsepower, 500 pound-feet of torque. Then there is the 5 liter naturally aspirated V8 with 400 horsepower, 410 pound-feet of torque. 3 liter turbo diesel V6 coming in at 250 horsepower, 440 pound-feet of torque. And lastly, the 3.5 liter hybrid V6 with with the 35 kilowatt battery, 430 horsepower, 570 pound-feet of torque. And by the way, that zero to 60 time for that last engine configuration, approximately 5.5 seconds. So that of course is the very quickest one. 700 miles of range on that one as well. And that was actually, first second I hopped in this one, I looked at the gas, it said 558 miles until empty. And I was pretty impressed at that. And this isn't even completely full, so that is pretty cool. And actually, even with all that acceleration numbers for that last engine, still 24 city, 24 highway. So very impressive mpg numbers there considering but regardless of engine setup that you go with the transmission configuration is going to be the same across the board for every single trim level you will find a 10 speed automatic transmission the same transmission found in my old four mustang gt so that is pretty cool mpg numbers overall kind of to sum up all of his engine configurations 19 city 24 highway 20 in the city 26 on the highway is going to be the best that belongs to the 2.7 turbocharged v6 rear wheel drive configuration in case anybody wanted the very best MPG numbers there. But so enough with the MPG numbers. Let's actually get into the fun stuff here. Let's do a quick little acceleration test. But before we do that, drive modes, wanted to touch on them. There is normal, eco, sport, tow and haul, slippery, deep snow and sand and mud and rut as well. Adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response and the traction control systems as well. And essentially the way that works is it actually uses sensors in the wheels. And when those sensors detect any kind of loss of traction, essentially it is going to work to correct that. So all in all, quite a bit of adjustments there. But now having mentioned all that, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway and let's do a quick little acceleration test here in our 2021 F-150. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, so I think I found a nice little spot here and let's go. Go, baby, go. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's fun. Wow. <laughs> This is a truck, man. Definitely no issues emerging onto the highway. That was quite an impressive acceleration for a truck, especially with this not being the Raptor. So dang, that was, that was, that was, I'm just going to keep saying that was, that was, that was nice, guys. Anyways, to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so as expected, you will find four-wheel disc brakes coming standard across the board. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, it is going to come in at approximately 136 feet. I've been finding it tested at. So having said that, let's go ahead and just 
Yeah, really no issues with the brake and feel whatsoever though. So although that number doesn't sound the best, it's still not the worst. I've tested worse than 136 feet, but really it feels quite nice. Definitely no issues with bringing the F-150 to a stop. So still kind of impressed there despite that number. But so then touching on suspension and handling of the F-150, up front you're gonna get an independent front suspension. In the back, leaf two-stage variable rear suspension. As far as the ride quality goes, it rides like a truck. It's pretty much as expected there. It's not bad. I will say that. It's certainly not bad for a truck. It's soaking up Pennsylvania's road imperfections kind of nicely, if I'm being honest. As far as the steering feel goes, it's definitely quite nice. It has a heavier weight to it. Instantly points you in the direction that you want to go. So for a truck, the steering feel is definitely quite nice there. Cabin noise, it's pretty nice as well. Actually, not a whole lot of exterior wind noise is coming into the cabin. I actually just got done driving the Bronco Sport and there was a decent amount of cabin noise with that one. But this one is like night and day compared to that. So definitely a nice serene cabin for the F-150, which kind of surprised me there. Touching on visibility, it's a truck. You guys all know pretty much if you've driven a truck before, what kind of visibility you're gonna get. It's pretty standard across the board there. So no issues for me with visibility. Also wanted to mention though, rain sensing windshield wipers are going to come standard on the King Ranch trim level and up. So what that is, is essentially whenever the F-150 detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it is gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So it's kind of like automatic headlights. It's just one last thing you gotta worry about. So that is of course very nice as well, but that about rounds off the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the completely redesigned 2021 Ford F-150. All right, and so here she is, you guys, the new 2021 Ford F-150 finished in rapid red, in case anybody was curious of the exterior color name. First, a couple facts here I wanted to give you guys. 92% of this truck is either revised or new for the 2021 model year. So that is pretty interesting. And this is the most aerodynamic F-150 ever built as well. So therefore, that's why you're seeing a little bit better MPG numbers for the 2021 model year as well. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on the 2021 F-150 here. New active front air dam that retracts at low off-road speed and then drops 3.1 to 3.5 inches at speeds above 45 miles per hour. That is pretty interesting. Front grille is also, of course, going to differ depending upon the trim level that you go with. For example, the XL is going to give you a dark front grille and bumper. XLT is going to give you a chrome perimeter on that front grille with some chrome accenting on the front bumper. Lariat and Limited, which is what you guys are looking at right now, typically will give you chrome horizontal bars on that front grille. But again, there's plenty of options where you could change that out to a matte black look like you are looking at right now. Dark brown with copper accents on that front grille coming with the King Ranch, of course. And the Platinum is going to give you kind of like a diamond block front grille, kind of like Mercedes. It's kind of interesting. So that, of course, being the top trim level. But taking a look at the sides then, halogen headlights coming with the XL and XLT. And they will come with LED daytime running lights, of course, as well. LED headlights coming with the Lariat trim level and up, and that of course is what we have today. So a little better extra illumination at night with that, of course. Fog lights coming with the XLT and up, but the XLT is going to actually give you halogen fog lights, whereas the Lariat trim level and up is going to give you LED fog lights. A little bit of a difference there I wanted to mention. Also still along the lines of those headlights, LED headlights with dynamic bending then coming with the King Ranch trim level and up. That's kind of interesting because essentially means when you're going around a bend at night, those headlights are going to swivel dependent upon the angle of your steering. So this is gonna better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a possum or a squirrel or whatever. So that is pretty cool there too. Dual front tow hooks, you guys can see them towards the bottom. They are going to come standard for all trim levels as well. And you can get front skid plates. That is going to be optional essentially across the board, but no particular trim level is going to come with them. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side of the F-150. So now since we are around side of this one, black front fender accents coming with the XL, chrome fender accents essentially with all other trims. And again, there's some options there to go ahead and switch that up. Chrome belt line molding coming with the platinum and limited trim levels and those two are going to give you chrome door handles along with that copper accents coming on the lower portion of the truck that is going to be with the king ranch it's kind of a universal theme with that one running boards coming with the king ranch trim level and up and of course optional on all other trim levels by the way power deployable running boards coming with the platinum and limited essentially when you open up the door they will fold down for you and then when you close the door they're going to tuck up again so that is a pretty cool feature there but when it comes to the side mirrors then power adjustable black side mirrors are going to come with all trim levels however you're going to get chrome mirror caps for the platinum did want to mention that can get them body colored of course as well like you're looking at right now heated side mirrors coming with the xlt trim 
level and up, you will get integrated turn signals for the Lariat trim level and up, along with that LED approach lamps as well. And you will get an auto dimming driver side mirror again with the Lariat trim level and up. But then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 17 inch steel wheels coming with the XL, 17 inch aluminum alloys for the XLT, 18 inch machined aluminum alloys for the Lariat and King Ranch, 20 inch polished aluminum alloys for the Platinum and 22 inch polished aluminum alloys for the Lariat. So quite a few differences when it comes to those wheel configurations. And of course there are actually optional wheel configurations available as well then, but now, Let's go ahead and make our way to the back. So let me touch on the taillights first. LED taillights coming with the King Ranch trim level and up is gonna be optional otherwise. Satin aluminum tailgate accents for the Platinum and Limited for that high-end look back there. There are going to be two rear tow hooks back there towards the bottom once again as well. And of course you got a tow hitch back there. And by the way, that rear tow connector, the towing capacity is going to range pretty substantially depending on which configuration you go with. It ranges from 5,000 to 14,000 pounds pounds and that's dependent upon the engine setup it's dependent upon the cab size and whether you go rear wheel drive or four wheel drive etc so you guys can look at the ford website if you wanted to for that but can tow up to 14,000 pounds so that's pretty impressive there but of course you got that f-150 lettering etched into the rear tailgate as well and just below it all you guys can see the large exhaust outlet coming out the side there with the chrome tip so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So, but now since we are around back of the F-150, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, there are several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a remote tailgate release that is going to come with the Lariat trim level and up. We do have that on the key fob, of course. There is a power tailgate that is going to come on the Limited. And then there is also a button by the driver's side left knee and a button on the tailgate itself, of course, as well. But we'll say once opened up, to get actually back in that tailgate area, there is a tailgate assist step that is going to be optional. We do happen to have it today, so I wanted to mention it. I've definitely used this in plenty of f-150 reviews before including the raptor actually as well and it is quite convenient i will say that it's a heck of a lot easier getting into the back there with that assist step as opposed to without it so i wanted to mention that led box lighting coming with the xlt trim level and up absolutely love that as far as the bed liners go you guys probably already know drop in bed liner and spray in bed liners are both optional none of them come standard but they are going to be available for you if you wanted that for all trim levels four cargo tie down hooks are going to come standard across the board some of the cooler features though because it does get freaking cool back here in the tailgate section pro power on board essentially that's an electric generator in the bed of the truck which comes standard by the way with the hybrid engine configuration that's how you're going to go ahead and get that but that provides a 2.4 kilowatt inverter which delivers 20 amps and 110 volts of electricity back into the bed of the truck if you were perhaps working on a project back there and you needed the power that is going to be available for you and that is freaking cool to be quite honest but also box link is going to come with the lariat trim level and up there's also metric roller markings that are available that's found on on the back side of the lift gate itself that is pretty darn cool also once you have that lift gate open there's also a place to store your phone back there i'm showing that to you guys right now i had to show that to you guys it's pretty cool also there is a bottle opener back there as well i feel like the list goes on of unique features that other trucks aren't doing right now that the f-150 the new f-150 i should say is doing and i absolutely love it i love the innovation in this thing they're thinking outside the box not to mention the two recesses for c clamps back there in the tailgate itself as well so that is pretty darn cool it just keeps getting better as far as payload capacity goes because i know everyone's curious 1745 pounds to 2238 pounds it's obviously going to range dependent upon which configuration that you go with so all of that also very very nice so essentially that tailgate is where you want to be so many features that do not come with other trucks out there so anyways let's go ahead now and make our way to the rear legroom which comes in at 33.5 inches for the super cab 43.6 inches then for the super crew which is what we have today of course so 43.6 it doesn't get better than that essentially that is a ton of rear legroom for reference i mean even six feet tall this is how much space i had back there there is a power rear window as well for the lariat trim level and up 
Of course, there's rear seats. There is 60-40 flip up bench seating that comes standard. That's always very convenient. If you need the space for, I don't know, a Great Dane or something. Heated rear seats are going to come with the King Ranch trim level and up. They're going to be optional on the Lariat. Grab handles back there as well, including the front seats, but we'll get to that in a second. Rear center armrest with cup holders you can find back there as well. There is rear ventilation. And then essentially every kind of charging port you could possibly imagine, including a 120 volt power outlet. There's a USB power outlet. There is a regular phone charging port there's also a 12 volt power outlet then back there as well so essentially that pretty much covers every type of hookup that you could possibly want for the rear passengers at least but now let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats manually adjustable cloth seating with the xl and xlt power adjustable leather seating for the lariat trim level and up memory settings as well for the lariat trim level and up power lumbar adjustments for the king ranch trim level and up and a lot of this is going to be optional on other trim levels like we have those power lumbar adjustments for the lariat that we have today and it is quite nice super comfortable seats by the way on this thing but anyways heated front seats for the king ranch trim level and up it's going to be optional on the lariat and xlt max recline front seat is going to be optional on the king ranch trim level and up and again like i said this is some of the most comfortable seating I've experienced in quite a while. They really are insanely comfortable seats here in the F-150. Ford definitely got it right when it comes to the seating in this thing. So absolutely love that. No issues with long road trips in this F-150. But then taking a look at the steering wheel, it is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the Lariat trim level and up. You will actually get wood accents if you were to go with that King Ranch trim level and up then. Heated steering wheel is going to come once again with the King Ranch trim level and up. And a heated steering wheel is going to come once again with that King Ranch trim level and up. Now, let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Ford logo on the one side when you flip it over. Lock, unlock, that button to pop the rear tailgate. And that times two button is going to be a remote start so you can warm the truck up before you actually get inside. So you don't freeze to death here in Pennsylvania. But anyways, it is a keyless entry as well with the push button start again for that Lariat trim level and up. So all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just beneath the gauge cluster there. And by the way, when it comes to that gauge cluster, the best way to go when it comes to that is going to be the Lariat trim level and up because that is going to give you a 12 inch fully digital gauge cluster where you can completely configure it to make it look however you want to make it look. And that is the best way. Otherwise, if you go with the XL or XLT, you're going to get the traditional gauge cluster, which isn't bad, but I will say, digital gauge clusters are where it's at you can of course check out your trip a trip b up there if you wanted to there's how many miles you have left until you hit empty as well there's a bunch of driving statistics regarding the truck itself there's some towing information navigation information bluetooth information radio settings the list goes on but really it's everything you could possibly want up there in the truck and by the way that tachometer is going to be in digital form all the way to your left there is a very large digital speedometer all the way to your right so really a dang good looking 12 inch digital gauge cluster up there i personally absolutely love it it looks so freaking good but anyways let's now make our way to overall interior quality twin panel moonroof coming with the limited is going to be optional on the xlt trim level and up and guess what we got that option there dual zone climate control coming with the lariat trim level and up so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures wireless phone charger for the king ranch trim level and up there's going to be universal garage door openers for the king ranch trim level and up optional on some of the other trims we actually have them for up to three different garage doors found on the back side of the driver's sun visor there multicolor ambient lighting for the lariat trim level and up i always love that but some of the coolest features found in this one if you guys look on the side of the air vents here there is the american flag i absolutely love that but perhaps one of the coolest features at least in my personal opinion is the shifter itself and so there's a little silver button located just above the p for park when you press that the shifter actually folds flat why would you want the shifter to fold flat and that is a wonderful question let me show you guys because when that shifter folds flat you can then take the center armrest and fold that completely flat so maybe when you're signing a contract when you're out on the job you can actually use this as a flat surface to go ahead and do that so that is absolutely wonderful you can also use it to put your chick-fil-a or your mickey d's on here if you wanted to eat on this flat surface that is also a very big plus as well but anyways definitely love those two features not only the fact that you can get that flat surface but the shifter folds flat in order for you to do it and then of course to put that shifter back up just press the silver button once again and it's going to fold back up for you so that is pretty 
pretty darn cool if you ask me. Also wanted to mention you do have dual glove boxes over here as well. The bottom glove box is pretty much as expected, but if you were curious how to open that top glove box, because it is kind of hidden, there is a button not located on the glove box itself, but just underneath the air vent there is incorporated, kind of just underneath the air vent. You just press that in basically and it pops open and then you could just shut it manually. But wanted to mention that because somebody is going to ask, how in the world do I open that? upper glove box but also there are several charging ports up here 12 volt power outlet once again you have a 120 volt power outlet up here as well to charge up your drill or whatever in front of the shifter you have a ton of storage and by the way this is one of the most luxurious open and closed systems in front of the shifter here i've ever seen it's all finished in a nice sturdy silver there so that is pretty darn cool. There's a USB charging port, phone charging port, and a little place to put your phone in there as well, since we do not have the wireless phone charger. Essentially, that keeps all the wires out of the way, so that's pretty cool. Also, another little slot for, I would assume, your phone right in the middle of the shifter and cup holders there as well. Of course, you got your cup holders. There's gonna be some ambient lighting at the bottom. That's what that little ring is at the bottom of the cup holders, some, some of the ambient lighting there. Then if you open up the center armrest, there's probably what is the very most space I've ever seen in any vehicle ever within that center armrest you also have a usb charging port phone charging port is in there as well and again an absolute ridiculous amount of space within that center armrest and there's a little retractable tray which you can put coins in there's actually little coin cutouts in there as well so overall pretty darn cool very nice interior quality kind of surprised me in a truck I love this brushed aluminum look, although it doesn't feel aluminum, but it is a brushed aluminum look from right underneath the infotainment screen. There's also a two-toned interior. We got the dark reddish brown leather to go with the black leather as well. So that is pretty darn cool. You got an overhead sunglass holder, LED interior lighting, really, this is where you wanna be. This is a very, very nice interior to a truck. So wanted to mention that I have no issues with it whatsoever. But then taking a look at the small TV up front here, it is going to differ actually. You get an eight inch color touchscreen display for the XL and XLT. However, if you go with the Lariat trim level and up, you do have what is considered a small TV back in the 60s. I don't know, I wasn't alive then, but it is going to be a small TV essentially. It is a 12 inch color touchscreen display and it is wonderful. And I will say it gets better than that because both of these screens actually, even the eight inch color touchscreen uses Ford's new sync four system which is pretty cool it's an upgrade from sync 3 essentially bluetooth and audio streaming come standard android auto apple carplay of course factory navigation system coming with the king ranch trim level and up it's going to be optional on some of the other trims like the lariat that we have today you can of course check out your climate control settings up there as well also your ambient lighting controls and there is going to be your radio settings as expected too so when it comes to the sound systems, you have several of them, of course, with the F-150. Six speakers coming with the XL, XLT, and Lariat. Eight speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system with 640 watts coming with the King Ranch and Platinum. And then there is an 18 speaker Bang & Olufsen sound system with 1,080 watts. That's crazy. Coming with the Limited. And so we do have that optional Bang & Olufsen sound system actually with the 640 watts at least. So what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And and let's test out the clarity of this one. Gosh darn, I haven't listened to that song I feel like in, I don't know, 50 years. <laughs> Anyways, that was plenty of a sound system for the F-150. Not the very best I've ever heard. Bowers and Wilkins is always my favorite, I feel like. But dang, that was a very, very good sound system for this one. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that tech display is when you do put this one in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Did want to also mention on top of that, limited trim level is going to add active park assist 2.0. That's obviously where the F-150 parks itself and a pro trailer backup assist system as well, which is going to be optional on some of the other trims like we have today. So as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. In the back, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors, tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also standard for all trim levels automatic high beams pre-collision assist with automatic emergency braking then as well then if you go with the xlt trim level and up you will get in addition to that lane keep assist reverse parking sensors blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert as well it's going to be the little car icons in the side mirrors letting you know if somebody is in your blind spot so you don't go turning into them then 
you go with the King Ranch trim leveling up, that is going to give you a forward sensing system, adaptive cruise control, evasive steering assist, and intersection then assist as well. And so overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, you guys may already know, this truck is special. This is freaking amazing with plenty of class exclusives, specifically in the bed of this thing. It's absolutely wonderful. I love the onboard generator, the fold flat shifter, the folding center armrest, the roller on the tailgate is amazing. The American flag on the side of the air vents, all of this stuff. You don't see other trucks out there doing, so I gotta love it. I would say the sweet spot on the F-150 as far as trim levels go is going to be the Lariat. That really gives you the most for your money, I would say, including that 12-inch infotainment screen. You got the digital gauges with the Lariat as well, ambient lighting, LED headlights. That is really the trim I would stick to if I were getting the F-150 because that really does give you a good bit there once you hit that trim level. As far as room for improvement goes, that fold-down shifter, I remember seeing the comments all over the place when I first put out my first look video of this one, when I showed that, nobody knows what the reliability is going to be. I would assume Ford would have thought of that already, how this feature is actually going to last over time, and I would assume they would have put it to the test. I'm sure they have. So when it comes to a feature like that, if I were Ford, I would definitely put that shifter to the test a million times just to make sure it didn't break. So having said that, for all the people that say, what about the reliability of the shifter? I'm sure Ford thought of that. So I'm sure they took care of that in the end. And in addition to that, you do have the three year, 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty as well. So that keeps you covered for a little bit at least. Also when it comes to room for improvement, that 60 to zero stopping distance being 136 feet is not the best. But again, having said that, the braking feel did feel perfectly fine for me. So in the end, the positives far outweigh the negatives in this thing. And I've tested a good bit of trucks at this point. And quite honestly, this thing impressed me. The 2021 F-150, so much better than the previous generations. There are four deer just sprinting right now across that cornfield, but I'm getting off topic, but dang, they are quick. So in the end, yes, you definitely have to go out and check the new 2021 F-150 out. It certainly impressed me. So, so many class exclusives, specifically again in the cargo area. So let me know what you guys think of the new f-150 in the comments section below i always love reading your comments also thank you for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car truck suv reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know and i will see you guys all in the next video stay go